system. Uh, Regina, unfortunately, could not make it uh, to be here. Um, so, a good advice, and I can do this as a German. Uh, uh, if you are anyhow in Germany uh, and uh, uh, need to take the German railway system, do not so much uh, rely on the schedule. Uh, the German railway system usually is uh, not on schedule. Uh, so therefore, uh, Regina, uh, uh, very, very uh, sorry about this missed her flight, but she shall be online with us. But now let's start with the first session. Uh, it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Ulrike Zuruzian, which many of you uh, know, of course, for her uh, fabulous uh, art historical work. And she will speak today about Tutankhamun and the Jekyll. Please give a warm welcome to Ulrike Zuruzian. Hello, is this okay? but I don't like to have it in front of me. <laughs> then I don't see the people. Thank you. So, the, um, good morning everyone, and I, ha I will have the pleasure to speak a little about Tutankhamun, a little about Howard Carter, and uh, the Jackal Anubis, uh, which is carved in wood, and it is a master uh, work of Egyptian sculpture. As it was often said here, one uh, takes care of several other aspects. Nobody thinks that these pieces were art, uh, artifacts and uh, uh, sculptures made by artists. Don't forget this, please. Whenever you uh, observe a thing, think behind each object there's an artist. A magnificent sculptor, a good painter, yeah? <laughs> uh, uh, splendid sculptures, uh, splendid architects, all of this make what we like, the Egyptian art and civilization. This said, uh, this is the head of the jackal uh, in the collection, and I want to thank, before I forget, afterward, I want to take, of course, the organizing committee, the beautiful people of the committee who invited me here. It's a pleasure. And um, the, uh, in the museum, I had the honor to see the Jackal live. I mean, without the vitrine. I thank Sabah Abdel Razek, uh, uh, the head of the Egyptian Museum Cairo, before it goes to the Nemec, uh, uh, to the Grand Egyptian Museum, sorry, where I hope the direction will allow me to study it uh, uh, nearer. <laughs> uh, I, I thank very, very kindly Francisco Bosk uh, Puche, who uh, from the Griffith Institute, you heard him yesterday, he gave uh, uh, all information we need about it, and he gave me very, very valuable uh, features of uh, Carter and information. Uh, Peter Del Manuelian with uh, pictures, Sandro Vanini, Francis Amin, Nicholas uh, Brown, uh, and Cornelius for from Pilgrim, you will understand why I thank him for allowing me to talk about the Jakas, which I studied uh, years back in the, with the Swiss mission in the Temple of Meremta. So, and the, let's not forget that Carter, before being an inspector and before being the great discoverer, he was an artist. And the, look at this very, very beautiful uh, drawing he made of the Jakal when he found it, he describes it and he gives his, here the dimensions. I will read his descriptions, uh, description. Uh, under two, uh, number two, 261, 261, a recumbent figure of the jackal Anubis, carved of wood, thinly coated with gesso, and painted black. The eyes and eyebrows inlaid with gold, the eyeballs of calcite, or calcite, uh, the pupils of obsidian, the corners of the eyeballs slightly tingled uh, red, tinged uh, red, and this we find also on the ca uh, faces of uh, Tutankhamun on the ca canopic uh, jars and uh, e everywhere else. The toenails of silver, they are of silver, blackened by corrosion. You will see that uh, some have uh, a shine uh, still. The legs and feet of the jackal are pegged to a flat board, gilt, 
measuring 91.5 uh, by 25 centimeters. This board slides onto the top of the pilonic shrine to which it acts as a lid. So this jackal is a sculpture uh, in, uh, with all, all its uh, value, splendor, but serves a, a, as cover to chest in form of a shrine where there were uh, ritual uh, uh, objects, clothes, tissues, and four magnificent pectorals, uh, which are illustrated in all the beautiful books of uh, Zayawas and Sartrovanini. You can admire them there. So uh, this, I think, again, the Griffith Institute for all this information I received. I put the uh, scale to show you. And this is what now uh, one does with the, uh, coloring the old pictures of person. Uh, you heard this from uh, Cisco yesterday. Uh, I uh, use it as introduction to you. As it was said, and I repeat it, this door to the uh, room where the jackal is standing as, uh, in the entrance had no seal. It was not uh, locked. It was not. So it was really guarding the entrance of this uh, uh, room. These are the old pictures and the description of uh, what was in front of the sledge of the uh, jackal placed in the doorway, says uh, Carter, practically preventing ingress to the room, was the black figure of a jackal, like dog Anubis, covered with linen and cushion upon a gilt pylon resting on a sledge with long carrying poles. This we will see. Uh, on the ground within a uh, threshold and in front of the pylon of Anubis was a small red torch, reed torch, with clay brick-like uh, pedestal, uh, plate two, and uh, this is the plate two. You, uh, the lower uh, picture there shows you the lower part uh, of the st uh, sculpture with the sledge, and in front of the sledge was this torch put uh, anchored in a small pedestal. Otherwise, this is how uh, the first viewer show, uh, saw uh, Anubis, the jackal, guarding what you see behind, lots of uh, marvelous things. And uh, Flet, he has a, line, a linen uh, shirt on him and protecting him. Underneath, he has a scarf. And if I remember well, it's, it is inscribed by the seventh year of Akhnaton. So it's, uh, uh, Marianne will correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I didn't find, uh, I had the note, but I, I couldn't uh, bring it. So under that, uh, there's a scarf, what you see in all sculptures, all uh, representations of the shakal. He has a scarf upon his, uh, knotted upon his neck, and uh, the extremities uh, flow, uh, fall over his shoulders. That's. Uh, the process, and here a nice general view of the Anubis mounted on the sh uh, shrine-like uh, chest, which contains uh, objects. It's mounted on a sledge, and the sledge can be uh, carried through these uh, poles, and uh, Carter believes there were eight people carrying this. Uh, the jackal itself is exactly like you see in all representations. I will uh, show you some examples of them. Uh, as Carter described, uh, wood uh, painted uh, black and all the rest, the ears, uh, the scarf and the band, which is uh, around his neck, are uh, gilded. Uh, like is the ho uh, uh, wood of the shrine on which uh, it, it lies, or uh, is couchant. Uh, the head here, uh, with the details seen from very, very near, and I thank Sameh Abdel Mohsen uh, for these uh, nice pictures. Seen from the front, you see the sledge with the poles uh, to carry the jackal, and the shrine is uh, decorated of a pousse, as you saw, the, uh, you heard now the technique of uh, 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 carving uh, uh, 
these uh, sheets, very uh, thin sheets. It is uh, inscribed all around. First of all, there's the Cornish, and here. Then there's the Taurus all around. It is inscribed all around the central uh, panel with the titulary of, uh, of the king, of Tutankhamun. And this titulary, sorry, I'm touching and it, uh, it turns. Uh, it, it, you have the two cartouches of the king there, and he is beloved of Genti uh, Mentiu, who is one of the earliest uh, jackal gods in uh, Abydos. And uh, he is beloved of uh, Anub uh, Anubis Genti Mentiu and Anubis Imiut. You will see that all over the story, Anubis changes epithets. He is the, the one who presides to the mummifying wood, or he is the one who is uh, the, uh, here in this case, it's the foremost of the Westerners, the Genti Mentiu. Uh, beside that, the panel is uh, framed by the frieze decoration and uh, resting on what will go all over the shrine, a frieze of jet and tit signs. Here in front, we have a, a, a axial jet, which we will find behind also, a, and uh, separated by the other signs by uh, tit uh, knots, the Isis uh, the so-called Isis notes. Then uh, lines separated from the dado. Here. So the palace decoration. The sides here, uh, you see the profile. Uh, the tail of the shakal is falling down. It's one piece with the scatter. Uh, it's not uh, pegged on the cover here, but it's, it belongs to the uh, statue, it falls in the back without touching the shrine. Here are the old photos of Burton from uh, Griffith Institute. If I have not written it, you know that all the black and white are uh, uh, from the Griffith Institute uh, uh, by courtesy of uh, uh, Cisco uh, Bosque Puche. And these are the modern uh, versions of these uh, magnificent uh, pictures, again, with two very, very uh, good uh, photographers, whom I like very much and whom I thank. Uh, mounted, the shakal is mounted on the shrine, you think, but it, it lies in reality on a board, which is gilt and has a grid uh, pattern. We will see a detail soon. Uh, the side of it is, uh, continuation of what we saw earlier, uh, a freeze, a continuous freeze of, uh, where is it? Yeah. The titulary of the king here. Doesn't work, I will try my arrow. Here, the titulary of the king, framing the two uh, stripes where you have Double jet, double tit, double jet this time. On both sides, it's the same pattern. Two rows of uh, this frieze, the lines and then the dado. On the other side, the proper right side of the jackal, the same, now with a better lighting, where you see the inscription, the tiltery of the king and the uh, jet and tit pair signs uh, double each time. In the back, now, uh, through manipulations uh, since hundreds of years, you can imagine, the <laughs> tail is not in the axial uh, axis anymore. It's slightly uh, moved. But if we see it from uh, nearer, first of all, I would like to tell you that the tail is not touching anything. So it means that now we, we will understand that to open that uh, chest, one has to pull from the tail but after that, I think one must not pull very much, otherwise it falls, it will be. So there must have been a certain mechanism, and this I, I hope I will have the chance to see when it's uh, in the gem, uh, the, the object. The details show you that uh, the tail is, uh, is, not, uh, is going a little uh, left of the axe, but in the middle there's uh, the jet medu on both sides of the axis, and uh, it's again, uh, you find the epithet, the name of Anubis, 
who is uh, in front of, uh, uh, who is in mute left and Gentisjechnischer uh, right, and the jet pillars. So this is the board on which it, it, it lies or it stands or it sits. I don't know how you say it. It's, uh, it's couchant. Huh? Uh, the, it's slightly open and you see here the opening. Inside there are compartments. It's, it's a real chest in reality, in form of a, in architectural form, in, in form of a shrine. Uh, between the posts, you see the rests of the pattern, the grid pattern, here. It means either you have to push or you have to pull uh, from the tail to open this chest. And the grid pattern is also found in the back near the uh, hind legs, uh, the hind part of the jackal, here, here and here. Inside, inside we will see the five compartments. But before going there, I hope it's clear in the picture, the nails are really uh, silver and they are, they are shining there. The screen is too high, so. Yeah, have you seen the nails? Yeah? No? No? <laughs> Would like some reaction, otherwise you, you will sleep and I will sleep with you. <laughs> so inside, when you slide the, uh, the cover of this, uh, you find uh, these five compartments, four smaller, they are separated by wooden uh, planks uh, and boards, and one larger. Within this, uh, this amalgamation of uh, clothes, there were four uh, extraordinary pectorals of the king. You see them in, uh, everywhere, and you see them very beautifully uh, on display in the museum. One with the scarab, the other with the goddess, etc. I uh, missed to put a picture of it, but yesterday I shortened, shortened, so that I can uh, keep the time. The, this jackal, Anubis, was not the only uh, apparition of a, a jackal-like apparition in the tomb. The burial chamber on all four walls, on each of the four walls, had a small niche cut into the wall where there were terracotta figures. And one of them is also a jackal, you see it there. And the description is very nice, uh, you can read it. Beside this traditional paraphernalia, necessary to meet and vanquish the dark powers of the netherworld, there were magical figures placed in small recesses in the walls, facing north, south, east, and uh, west, covered with plaster, conforming with the ritual laid down in the Book of the Dead for the defense of the tomb and its owner. Associated with these magical figures are incantations, and this was quoted yesterday in one, uh, one of the talks, to repel the enemy of Osiris, the deceased, in whatsoever form he may uh, come. Voila. So, uh, second apparition uh, of a jackal in the tomb, and it's very, very nice. It's a small uh, figure, painted black also. And uh, I uh, advise you to read everything what uh, Terence Duquen has written on the jackal deities, several articles, and uh, most, uh, most of all, most important of all, the jackal uh, divinities, who, which was uh, published, uh, and where he shows how it started with the jackal, the earlier uh, ceilings, ceiling impressions, or the label of Horaha, uh, Horaha there uh, in the middle, the wooden label of Horaha, or the ceiling impression with the names of Horaha and uh, uh, Den. In the upper part, you all know this, I uh, must not comment, it's the very famous uh, seal uh, of the door which uh, Carter had to wait uh, uh, his visitors to open. One of them is stamped with uh, this, with the jackal and the nine, uh, nine uh, bound prisoners, which represent the nine bows. Uh, and in the between the two, the detail and the seal, there, uh, there's one, another seal from uh, Abydos. Here, the jackal Anubis is on his mountain. One of his other epithets. 
Uh, here. It's not working, uh, or I'm, I cannot function. Uh, this one, okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, for a long time I was looking for the eyes here, and they are here in reality. And she says that they are exactly like uh, the uh, executed, treated like the eyes of humans, like the sculpture of uh, uh, Menkaure Mikerinos. So this is one of the first uh, uh, sculptures in the round of the jackal. Maybe there are more, but this one is really spectacular. Uh, then uh, on uh, Old Kingdom coffin, uh, sarcophagus lids, you find the jackal. But all, the, all of these are still not lying on a shrine. They are, uh, so to say, freely uh, 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 lying there. There's uh, one sarcophagus of uh, the King uh, Meres Ach uh, from Giza, and uh, one, found, one Old Kingdom sarcophagus lid found by Monte in Tanis, and another one here found near the causeway of Unas in Saqqara. Uh, the uh, Kawab, the sun, uh, has, uh, has a jackal which is here uh, drawn. And uh, Haef Hufu, who is probably the future uh, Kefren, uh, here at that moment hereditary, hereditary prince of uh, uh, Hufu, has also two representations on both sides of uh, both side uh, walls of his niche. Uh, Meres Ach tree, the queen, here too on uh, the symmetrical representation with the jackal. And now the jackal has a, sh a sort of shell, like Mark who is... Uh, <laughs> uh, in the Middle Kingdom, they start to decorate the lunettes of the stela. There are lots of examples. And in every museum, make an exercise for yourself. Look when, they, when it starts to come, when the jackal starts to come. Sometimes it's only the eyes, the Ujat eyes, and sometimes it's the jackals, as you see here. So, uh, they are either uh, Upwaut, the opener of the ways, the jackal Upwaut, or it's uh, Anubis in, with one of his uh, many epitheta. Uh, this representation continues all over uh, the centuries, the kingdoms, uh, here, magnificent examples of Seti I in his uh, uh, temple in Abydos there, and uh, of Ramses II, also from Abydos, in the Louvre, both facing each other. Uh, you all know the very beautiful representation of the two jackals uh, on both sides of uh, this uh, uh, central uh, motif in the tomb of Senegem. And uh, Betsy Bryan, who has a, a very beautiful article in the temples, who, who is making a whole catalog of the statues of Amenhotep III, attributes this, uh, it was unpublished, this is the first time published by her, uh, to a statue which was found by, uh, in Medine Tabu in the chapel of Amenardis. Uh, which is uh, supposed to be in the Cairo Museum, but I couldn't find it, so I put you the picture of uh, Bruyere. In, in situ, in Medina Tabu, in the blockyard, there's another statue of a jackal. You see the, the four poles there. So this is for uh, the sculpture in, in the round, and uh, the representations, the paintings, you will find them either in the tomb of, uh, in royal tombs, in the tomb of uh, Nefertari, the, the queen, uh, Pashed here in Der El Medine, uh, or in uh, temples like uh, there with uh, Seti the first, uh, the symmetrical representation of the jackass, and even uh, in uh, Saqqara, in the tomb of Maya and Merit, you have uh, the same jackal to whom the uh, uh, adorers are bringing offerings. Even uh, in the court of the Cairo Museum, you f will f uh, see this representation of uh, the Prince Sheshonk on the chapel of uh, limestone, which is there, or it has moved, I don't know. Uh, here, now, this jackal uh, of Tutankhamun has a long story, as you see. But uh, for the first time, one of his uh, successors, and now we believe that it's uh, his grandfather, the grand uh, Amenhotep III, the magnificent king, had a whole avenue of uh, 
not sphinxes, but real jackal statues of Anubis, somewhere in the uh, western part of his uh, vast temple precinct. And there, after it had been toppled by an earthquake, which happened, we believe, in the first years of the reign of Meremta, uh, these ja uh, jackals, which were broken probably, were sliced then and reused as building material in the temple of Meremta, where I had the pleasure to study them with the Swiss mission uh, for uh, 13 years, before, just before switching to the temple of Amenhotep III. But I was happy to study the statuary there in the temple of Meremta. All of it is reused uh, from the temple of Amenhotep III. So I'm double uh, gratified uh, with this job. Uh, in the Museum of Meremta, if it's open, if you have the luck to uh, go in and see it, uh, there are two pieces of uh, such a jackal statue. The originality of Amenhotep III is that he put against the breast of the jackal a statuette of the king, mummy form, uh, hence uh, crossed across uh, his uh, chest, wearing the nemes. All of it put on a shrine, like you saw, in uh, wood, uh, gilded wood by Tutankhamun. In, uh, and here, in this case, it's monumental statues of a shrine holding the statue of uh, the jackal, protecting the king. So in reality, uh, I have made another join. I propose this join. But for aesthetic reasons, uh, you understand that this one was chosen. It's uh, more complete. Uh, from another statue uh, here, uh, this joins really uh, the lower part of the, uh, of the jaw of the uh, jackal, ahead of the king and the chest there. You see uh, wearing nemes and holding with his two hands crossed over the chest the Ankh uh, signs. The profile of this jackal, and it was found by Petri years back. Uh, was uh, put in, uh, in one magazine of Asasif from where we had permission to take it out. And this is the first glance of the jackal since uh, Petri uh, seeing the light. And the lower part, you see the, the uh, head of the statue of the king, whom he's protecting. Uh, of profile here, the head there, and the profile of the king, and the lower part, or the chest of the king. Many uh, statues, many heads, cut, sliced, broken, were reused in the foundations of the Temple of Meremta, in the courts, or sometimes in the walls also. You see, they were painted like, uh, uh, like old statuary in reality, in uh, ancient Egypt or in antiquity. They have beautiful eyes, the eyes of Amenophis, uh, slanting, and they have, uh, of course, the cosmetic bands around which prolong the eyes on the temples. Here you have examples. I uh, show you examples of it. And what do you see? The same band with, uh, decorated with the frieze, which the uh, Tutankhamun jackal had, and the red scarf, which is painted now on, uh, around his neck. Uh, other uh, examples I show you here, a very beautiful head there, uh, which is in a magazine. And from the time of Petri, taken to the Victoria and Albert Museum, and now in the British Museum, two pieces of such statue, which uh, belong uh, uh, to Amenhotep III, reused as uh, building material by Meremta. And the rest of the bodies of the jackals, some of them at least, exhibited in the uh, what uh, uh, we can call a lapidary museum, uh, where the uh, sphinxes and other very nice remains of the material of Amenhotep III reused by Meremta are uh, stored. Here I show you two examples, and you see that at the breast where it's cut, and you see if, uh, if the picture is uh, clear enough, you see the places of chisel where the statue was cut away because they wanted to have blocks to, uh, to use in, uh, as building material in the floor. And one of the statues here joins. The, they have chiseled not to get rid of the inscription because it's uh, Amenhotep III, but to have a surface to, to squeeze in a block in, in some construction of the temple. So this is the way they were found in the temple of Meremta, making the uh, 
foundation of a base, uh, of a column base there, or turned upside down as block, or here you see the claws of uh, the fingers of the jackal, or here a, a slice of his body. This is how they were found and uh, then um, uh, put on display in the uh, Lapidary Museum. I show you examples of pieces. There are uh, many, many, hundreds of pieces of these jackals, which I have uh, had the pleasure to study. Pieces of heads, you see, the, the pieces of the chest, where uh, the king is holding the Ach uh, signs. And on the lower part of the statue, there's his titulary, starting with Nature ne Nefer, the good uh, god, and the names of the king here. Uh, there you have Nebmatre, the uh, throne name. And here, where is it there? You have uh, Amenhotep III, and you will realize that Amenhotep III had been chiseled by the people of uh, uh, Akhnaton during the Amarna period and restored, which means that until then, the Dromos was holding the the avenue of Sphinx of uh, Shakas was there somewhere, leading to probably a greater uh, shrine of a Shakal, uh, of which the Swiss mission and uh, I have found pieces of uh, the head and of the body. So this is only to, it's, they don't join particularly, but uh, it's an exercise uh, to uh, reconstruct the shape of the statuettes of the king. And uh, Will Schenk, who is a marvelous artist, uh, made these drawings uh, for me. I show you two examples. Uh, you see the front side of the jackal with the statue of the king, mummy form, uh, holding Ach. And uh, the uh, facade of uh, the shrine was, instead of the double tits and uh, jet of, uh, or the, the jet and tits signs of uh, Tutankhamun here, they have two uh, represent uh, representations of two Yunmutev priests facing each other and uh, consecrating the articles. Finished? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Two? Oh, okay. Very quickly, again, Amenhotep III uh, chiseled and redone. Now, in Komalhetan, where I work, in the temple of Amenhotep III, where all this material has come, we have 12 fragments of such, a, such jackal statues. We cannot say that the dromos came until the, uh, the temple. And this is courtesy of Christian Leblanc, where the Jackal Avenue reconstructed uh, pieces found by uh, Petri and a piece in the uh, Cairo Museum. Around the Rameseum, in the north side, there was an avenue of uh, jackals, uh, same. And I guess this type is, uh, is an original version of something which existed long before uh, Nozomu Kawai kindly gave me these two pictures of a statue he published. It's a lion having, uh, of the Sixth Dynasty, uh, having between his paws the small feet of one standing statue of Khufu, please. So from there, I make the assimilation with, they had an example. Uh, the Great Sphinx of Giza, later we know that it, uh, there was a, in New Kingdom, there was a, a statue of a New Kingdom king. But uh, maybe already in the Old Kingdom, there was a statue there of, a, yeah, of Hufu, maybe, uh, which uh, joins the idea of Rainer Stadelmann, and to whom uh, I believe that uh, the Great Sphinx of Giza was Hufu, not Kefren. <laughs> Uh, the, swing, uh, the stela there show you a very beautiful uh, 18th dynasty, 18th, 19th dynasty uh, representations of the Sphinx. One very artistically done with the two pyramids there. And uh, you'll give me a few minutes more, please. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah, you must know where the type comes from. Middle Kingdom, we have the first evidence of a real statue with uh, a, sta uh, a Sphinx of probably Amenemat uh, 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 tree in the Cairo Museum, uh, limestone, and then appear uh, since the reign of Amenhotep II, uh, not sphinxes, but rams, real rams with folded legs. Uh, you, have, you can go around, it's Amenhotep II, Amenhotep III, uh, and I have put the literature when we published, uh, of course you will read uh, all the articles, you, you will have to read about them. Uh, the same type in Jebel Barkal, of which two rams are gone in Berlin and uh, Torino. And Pinegem, we will hear uh, uh, a speech by Salah later uh, on the Pinegem Sphinxes here. 
and uh, courtesy by uh, Fazinis, uh, Sphinx of Taharka, please, in the same attitude. Now the king is not mommy, mommy, mommy for me anymore. But it, these are all rams, so the type is spreading. And in Karnak, Karnak 10, this is uh, pretty important. Uh, many scholars of Karnak have uh, studied the Sphinxes of the uh, avenue in front of the tent pylon of Karnak in the south. Uh, Tronecker, Laos Tronecker, Berlandini, uh, and they have found that uh, Tronecker, this is a, uh, this is a, a, a figure taken from his article. He, he shows in these uh, figures that at the beginning the sphinxes had the heads of Nefertiti and of uh, Akhenaton on both sides of, of the avenue. Then they were headed and they were replaced by ram heads. Later, now very original, uh, uh, Tutankhamun has come and has placed statuettes of himself in the uh, inner cavity. You see there, it's open to insert a statue inside. And these statues are where? In the Cairo Museum until uh, lately. Uh, uh, I believe this head in Boston could, I suggest that it could belong to such a uh, 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 such an avenue of sphinxes. And uh, the lower part shows you real sphinxes with lion body and ram headed from the reign of Ramses II in the, be before, the, before and behind the pylon of Karnak, the, the second pylon, in the first court, pardon. And uh, Statues of Jakaz, one found by Zai Hawass and uh, another uh, by Munro in Saqqara, a head in Hildesheim. And one exceptional uh, sphinx of, I believe, Tutankhamun, uh, who has the head of Amon. And it was a query by Luc Gabold uh, after uh, Agnès Cabrol had published in her dissertation this, this picture taken in the, uh, in the middle of the 80s. Um, 18, uh, 18 something, 50s, in Karnak, in the court now called uh, of uh, Middle Kingdom in front of the Achmenu, uh, which I rediscovered on, uh, by, uh, pushed by the query of uh, Luke in Alexandria in the company of uh, water. So with this, another uh, shakal, this you know, in the paintings we show, but the last, the last mention of a jackal, it's not finished with Tutankhamun, are the two statues, I believe they are caste statues of the king, they are called guardian statues. What do they have on uh, the corners of their kilt? Jackal heads, yeah? And this will be uh, for the next centennial. centennial. <laughs> Centennial Lecture. Thank you very much. I'm coming. Thank you very much for the science talk. We are